Welcome back to BSPN and our wrap up of the figure Olympia. Make sure that you subscribe, like, comment, turn on notifications so you know when these videos go live and let us know what you think. Let's go. I am decked out in my Olympia gear because we are wrapping up the Olympia today. <laughs> Thank you. So first thing is, we do have a couple more tickets for Q's Conquering the Stage left, so if you haven't gotten yours yet, you need to. Those, that link is in our bio. Um, your lipstick is amazing today. Thank you. This is my Cutie Beauty Cosmetics. This is Rebel? Rehab. This is Rehab. I think for a second. This is Rehab. That's the color I have on. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, awesome. And yeah. that's something else. You know, We'll talk about this, too, when it comes to the YouTube stuff. I'm thinking of... Uh, starting to go to some more of these shows and getting actual media passes so that I can start covering this as if we are part of the media. Well, we would be if I would be doing that. So um, I just feel like, and this is one of the things, you know, I mentioned this on my stories a little bit yesterday where I felt like I had some moments of clarity this weekend. Uh, and one of those moments was in, in relation to the amount of coverage of the men's side of the sport versus the amount of coverage of the women's side of the sport. So I kind of want to start correcting that, <laughs> you know? Um, I think I have a good voice to do that. I think I have the experience to do that. I think I have the ability to do that. So I, I'm going to start really kind of taking this a little bit more seriously and, um, and seeing what we can do as far as advancing the female side of the media coverage and things like that, because I saw a really big discrepancy between the men and the women uh, all weekend. And I believe that the females of the sport deserve just as much representation. So I think I'm going to start that little journey. It's going to be an uphill battle and I understand that, but everything that I've done in my life has been an uphill battle. So <laughs> I'm okay with it, you know? Um, yes, yes, go for it. Love it. Love how the brand keeps evolving. Yes, absolutely. That would be awesome. Great idea. Okay, cool. Um, bless it, bless it, bless it. More inclusion is crucial. Love it. Amazing. They've been incredible. Yeah, and I think, you know, the main thing, the main reason why I want to do this is because those of us that have been in this industry for a long period of time know that a lot goes into this and it's not just pretty girls in suits. That's not what it is. You know, you guys, if you come here on my live feed, you, you understand because I talk to you guys about it and tell you all the intricate things that go into actually getting on stage and being successful. Uh, and I think that there just needs to be more of that kind of education out there. There's a lot of that for the guys, a lot of it. Uh, there's just not a lot of it for the women. So I feel like that would be a really good place. We could, we could kind of expand that, you know? Um, I would love more technical and informal commentary like you do being promoted. Yes, we got your back. Thank you. You know, we're here for it. Yeah. So, you know, and I see that being a, a real opportunity for us to grow, you know, um, just again, so that we're more than just pretty girls in bikinis because we are, you know what I mean? It's more than that. It's more than that. So uh, if you haven't already, like I said, go ahead and subscribe and uh, to my YouTube channel, everything that that is in our bio as well. Subscribe, turn on notifications, all of that, because I'm really going to start creating a plan to do this for more shows next year uh, so that we can get this kind of, you know, I mean, even this year too, there's just not a whole lot left. <laughs> There's not a lot left this year. So I'm going to do what I can for the rest of the year uh, and get you as much coverage as I can and then just kind of keep evolving it as we go forward and see how um, how it picks up steam and things along that line. If you need assistance, I'm all in. I love it. Uh, amen. There you go. Cool. So with that said, guys, the more that you can support me and our channel on YouTube and things like that, the more opportunities I'm going to have to be able to do this. So I can't do it if nobody follows it or watches it, right? So um, if you follow me, watch me, all those kinds of things, support our YouTube channel as much as you can so that we can start growing that and really create a presence for the females in our sport. That is really, if, as you guys know, I've been doing this business for seven years and that is really where my heart lies and um, I can't, I can't do it by myself. I do need your help. So if you if you want to be my assistant, Miriam, this is where y'all can help me right now. <laughs> get, get me some uh, some uh, some help with the actual views and things like that when it comes to YouTube subscribing and things like that, so that we can get more of a presence. So we can we can gain more of a presence, um, and that is where you could really uh, make an impact. Okay, um, the more that you do that, the more I can more I can bring to you. Right. So, okay, on to the Olympia. 
So um, basically, I got you. There you go. I love it. I love it. So basically, things played out pretty much how I thought they were going to, with a few surprises in the mix, that kind of thing. Um, I think the, the division that actually created the most surprises for me was figure, to be honest with you. Um, you know, watching that... Um, your passion in, in this war is amazing, very inspiring. Well, thank you, thank you. I am very passionate about it, that's for sure. <laughs> um, you know, Sydney did win figure. We knew that was gonna happen. I mean, that's kind of a given. However, I will also say this. Now, first things first. Sydney Gillian has now won her fifth Olympia title, which means she is the record holder now for the most Olympia wins in figure. Um, Prior to that, she was tied with Nicole Wilkins. Now she is, she's the GOAT right now, okay? So, and she also shows no signs of slowing down. She has no uh, plans of retiring. She has no plans of stopping. So everybody's gotta catch up to her, basically. Now, I will say that when she first walked out on stage, when I saw her prejudging, I felt like she wasn't exactly her best. Um, she's still phenomenal, don't get me wrong, she's absolutely phenomenal, but there was just something a little bit off about her. And after like looking at pictures and things like that, and I thought this was the case, I said this to my friend that was sitting next to me, I said there's something, like her shoulders aren't popping or something. Um, and that's what it was. Now this could have been by design, it could have just been the way that she was posing, maybe she got some posing critiques or something like that, but if you go back and you look at her photos from last Olympia versus this Olympia, her shoulders were a much bigger last Olympia versus this Olympia. Now, also, her lats were bigger this year than they were last year. So that could very, very well be just a posing thing. Um, and maybe she got the she got the critique that she needed to pull her lats out a little bit more. But that was the first thing that I noticed when she walked on stage. I was like, there's just something something a little bit off and that's what it was so she pulled her lats out a little bit more which in turn made her uh, her shoulders look a little bit smaller now again I don't know that could have been a, an actual judging critique something they told her she needed to do uh, but I personally liked the look of the rounder more capped shoulders that she had last year that's just me personally but you know again she still won it with a perfect score so it's not like she did anything wrong or anything along, along that line just me personally that was the first thing and, and one thing that I noticed um, the girl that took second to her was um, Natalia, who also had won the Arnold last year. Uh, and I think that between the two of them, they are likely going to go back and forth quite a bit. Um, I just see, I just see them being very dominant in this particular division. Um, and I think that Sydney, in, in general, is probably going to win each time because her genetics are just better. She just got a smaller waistline. Natalia looks great. Um, looks phenomenal, but it's just really, really hard to beat Sydney's waist. Just that's that's it. I mean, she's got the perfect proportions when it comes to figure. That makes it very difficult to beat. Um, the girl that came in third, Stephanie Gibson. I've actually never seen her before. I, I know she's obviously won a pro show, or she wouldn't have been there to begin with. Um, but I was I was a little bit surprised to see her up in that top call out. Now, this is why I want to do the um, voiceovers for these call outs because they worked these girls a lot on stage and they were dropping their poses. This girl in particular could not keep her lats out when they were doing uh, quarter turns. Now, obviously she just placed third in the Olympia, so probably some of these things had to do with nerves and things along that line, but they you could watch them adjusting their poses a lot on stage um she just won the savannah pro okay okay see i didn't follow that show so that makes sense why i didn't i didn't know who she was makes sense okay um but yeah she had a really hard time during comparisons keeping her her front pose open um so when i when i do that little voiceover video for you guys on youtube i'll show you exactly what i mean but um this is why posing conditioning is so important you guys the people my, like my friends and stuff i was sitting with at the at the show were like oh my god this is why you say posing conditioning is so important this right here this was why figure was exactly why um i thought that lola would have placed higher um I, you know, to be honest with you, again, there was a lot of shakeup in this particular uh, first call out for figure. There was, there was a lot of shakeups. Um, Sydney's conditioning was on point. It was, you know, that was another thing about Sid, Sydney when she first walked out. I thought she was actually a little bit soft from the back. Um, that was something that I saw when she initially walked out in the first set of comparisons. 
but by the time she got up there for call outs, that wasn't a problem. So um, I, it, I don't know if it was just, she just wasn't posing hard enough during the first initial set of, co of comparisons or what, um, but that definitely changed by the time she got into that first call out. Uh, at that point, she didn't have any issue anymore. Who knows, maybe she went backstage and while everybody was, was posing, she you know had some water or some sodium or something and tightened, her up, tightened herself up a little bit. Um, could have been a number of different things. But again, when going back to what I said before, when she first initially walked out on stage, I thought there was something a little bit off about her, but it wasn't until she got into the call outs and comparisons, I was like, no, nah, there's nothing wrong with her now. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Sid was a statue, she was, yes. Um, uh, oh, and you were talking about Sidney's conditioning. You were talking about her posing conditioning. I was talking about her actual physical conditioning, but you're right. Her posing conditioning was on point too. Her posing conditioning was great. That is why posing is so important. So important, so important, so important. And that could have actually helped her. That could have been the, the thing that maybe that's why I felt like she, her conditioning was a little off when she first walked out. Um, she got better, she posed. That could have been part of it too. Um, I thought Sydney was softer and smaller than the other girls. She was, she was. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's a bad thing. Um, I Again, I thought she was a little bit softer than when, that what she normally is. It's really hard to look at photos from like last year's Olympia because the lighting was so different than this year's Olympia. Like everybody looked 10 times harder at last year's Olympia because the lighting was a lot more shadowed. This year's lighting made everybody look soft. This year's lighting and the pictures and stuff made everybody look soft. In person, they didn't look like that. In person, they didn't look like that. So, you know, you hear a lot of this pop up stuff online about people that should have placed here, or should have placed there, um, from those that are watching like the live streams and stuff. It is not the same. I'm telling you, when I pulled up these pictures on, on NPC News, I was like, nah. I said, they looked way better in person than they did in these pictures. That's why you can't judge, judge a show from pictures or, or a live feed, right? Um, but her posing was so smooth. Maybe that's what made her win. Well, yeah, her posing was amazing. And like I said, as she started posing, I personally felt she got better as she posed. A lot of these girls got worse as they posed. A lot of girls lost their condition as they posed. Um, and that's just, that's just, you know, part of the, the peaking process, but it's also posing conditioning. It's also posing conditioning right there. Um, so there was a couple of other shockers uh, when it came to the first call out because, um, let's see, Nadia, uh, Nadia Wyatt is typically up in that top call out. And she was actually the last call out this Olympia, which is not typical for her at all. But to me, when I saw her on stage, she was way over conditioned. She was way too hard. She didn't, she lacked a lot of pop. Um, and to me, she looked really unbalanced. Uh, and I think she looked unbalanced because she was too conditioned, because she was too hard. Uh, and they really severely punished her for that. They severely punished her for that. So, um, yep, every live stream video I was sent looked soft. Yeah, that's why I laugh when people try to be like these, you know, these armchair quarterbacks and stuff like that when they're at home, like critiquing stuff sometimes, because it doesn't look like that in person. It just doesn't. Um, so... You know, even when I do these these wrap ups and stuff, I always, if I'm not at the show, I use the caveat of I didn't see that in person, so I don't know if this is actually what they look like. You know what I mean? Um, she was so dry. She was. She was. She was soup. She was way overboard. We're talking about um, Nadia right now. Yes, she was way overboard. Um, so that was a huge shake up right there, because again, she's typically up in that top three. You know, top three, top four, and that's a big drop to go out of that uh, to the last call out, right? So that was a big one. One that I um, that I failed to mention during my my uh, predictions that I should have was Jessica Reyes Padilla. I failed to mention her, and I should have should have put her up there in that top call out. Um, she was second place at the Arnold last year, uh, and she looked great this year too. Uh, a lot of these girls just have a lot of mass on their bodies, and and which is good, but that also distorts their proportions a little bit, which is why Sydney always beats them. Sydney's never going to be the biggest girl on stage, but because her genetics are so phenomenal with that tiny little waistline, uh, everybody else is always playing catch up to her, basically. Um, you should be a show commentator. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Heather Dees, I thought, looked phenomenal. I thought this was actually one of Heather's best packages I've seen. I thought she looked really, really good. I just wanted to mention that. Um, there's this girl... 
uh, and I, I'm gonna pronounce her name incorrectly. It's Anne de Anne de Anne de Jong, de Jong or something like that. She's she's Asian. She I, I don't know if she's from China or something like that. She's from one of the Asian countries. I've never seen her before, but she worked her way up into that top call out. Um, and as soon as she walked on stage, I was like, oh, she should do wellness. She has these quads, man. They are phenomenal. I was like, and obviously she made the first call out, so that was great. But she's one that she could easily flip over to wellness if she wanted to and do pretty pretty well there. Um, I was actually really really uh impressed by her quads <laughs> um let's see who else one that i thought could have placed a little bit higher that was placed a little lower was boyana i actually really liked boyana's look i would like i would have liked to see her a little bit higher i did think she, uh, according to my predictions that she was going to be higher but uh, she ended up placing 13th and i personally thought i thought she looked great um her posing was a little bit different. She, her posing is always a little bit different. It's always a little bit flamboyant. I, and I, you know, I actually like that with her. Um, I thought Carly Starling would have placed higher. Yeah, she's typically a little higher too. She's typically a little higher too. Um, I agree about Heather D. She looked great. I thought she well, cut off right there for you. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, in general, I agree with a lot of what they did in this particular uh, class. Uh, you know, like I said, I could have seen Boyana up a little higher um, Carly looked good. Carly looked good. Let me see. I'm going to pull up her pictures real quick too. Um, and she is typically a little higher than what she was here. Let's see. It's so hard from these pictures, you guys. Her lats are a little unbalanced, but these pictures make everybody look soft. Just so you know, they make everybody look soft when they, they weren't, they weren't. Yeah, she she had a hard time with her with her lats in her front pose. She's a little unbalanced. I don't know if she has an impingement or something like that. Um, but if you look through her photos, it was just a little bit difficult for her to get into her poses, and I think that hurt her. I think that hurt her. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of the suit either. It's a little bit too a little bit too dark on her. She needs something. She needs some pop. She needs some color. It's a black suit with like brown stones and stuff. She needed she needs some color on her. Um. I'll say that about Rhea Gale too. I was not happy with her suit. I thought it was really distracting. She actually had a really bright like neon, a whole bunch of different neon colors on her suit. And to me, it was really like, that's all I could look at. It was really distracting on her. Um, so I wasn't happy about that. I thought she looked good though. I actually would have put, um, put her a little higher. She had an issue with her rib cage just sticking out a little bit though. And so with the rib cage issue um, and the suit issue, to me, there were just a few things with her physique that were distracting. Um, I think that's what I think that's what hurt her. Um, it was just a weird pattern on that suit, just a weird pattern, and that's what I kept looking at. <laughs> you know, um, a lot of these girls are going more towards more simple patterns, all over patterns like bikinis and stuff, which I actually really like uh, because it doesn't dis doesn't distract me. It doesn't distract me. It makes me look at their whole physique, and I like that. Um, that's been the trend recently, and I, I do like that. But yeah, I, I, I don't see Sydney being unbeatable forever, but for at least the foreseeable future, <laughs> she's going to be unbe unbeatable. <laughs> it's, my okay. journey is a little bit different because of the hunger that I have just as a person in general in life and business and schooling everything. I'm just a hungry person. So for me, every single show is just a start over. And that's been what this is since I started prepping again yesterday. So as soon as I'm off stage, I have my egg whites and my oats. I have one cheat meal on Friday and I'm back ready to go for hopefully number six and keep working every single year. But that's what it takes if you want to be a continuous champion. And that's what I would really, really want to be. And I'm going to say I'm going behind. Well, you heard her. She is not slowing down. What do you think? Do you think Sydney can go for number six next year? Go ahead and comment below and don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, turn on those notifications and be back here for our next installment of BSPN. Thank you so much for your support and we'll see you next time.